it's a miracle pool meeting, so uh, we're just going to have a nice little chat about waters to inspire you to go through the pool. The Bible says, Jesus came once in the end of the ages. The fullness of time, we all know that. And the Bible says, if the pattern of the heavenly, the earthly tabernacle, had to be cleansed by the blood of bulls and of goats, then the heavenly needed to be cleansed by something better. So it says, Jesus went in once and for all into the heavenlies to obtain an eternal redemption for us, not with the blood of bulls, but by his own blood to secure that eternal redemption. Okay? But Jesus said, Our Father, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, is heaven dirty? Is God's throne dirty? So, what did Jesus have to clean in the heavens if, I mean, the earthly tabernacle had to be cleansed by blood of bulls and goats? Now, Jesus had to clean the heavenly by a better sacrifice. How? You know, what did he have to clean in the heavens? Okay, so the Bible says we are the temple of God and God dwells in us. Your Bible does say it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Is that all right? We do say, Jesus, come into my life, do we? I receive you as my personal Savior. We do say, cleanse me in your precious blood. Wash me from all sin and unrighteousness. So Jesus came into the heavenly. We are seated in heavenly to cleanse us to bring an eternal redemption. Okay? As we bore the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So we were in Adam, now we are in Christ. Now we are not earthy, we are heavenly, because we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So Christ came into the heavenly with His own blood to cleanse the temple so that he could now appear my life is hidden with Christ in the presence of God for us Amos chapter 8 Amos chapter 9 verse 13 says the day cometh when the plowman will overtake the reaper and he that puts seed in the ground he that tread the grapes and the, the, the mountains will drop sweet wine we're going to reap harvest that we never even thought of I mean, before we do something, we're going to already get. In other words, the thought will be the production. When I still think I'm going to do good, I'm going to already be blessed by just what I'm thinking. And sometimes before I even think, I'll already be blessed. So we are stepping into that time. In our life. So uh, verse nine, verse, chapter 9, verse 13 starts like this. Behold, the days are coming. Okay? Now, in chapter 8, there's a scripture that also says, Behold, the days are coming. Let's read that one together, chapter 8, verse 11, King James. Behold, the day is come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Now, okay, just stop here. But God is not the author of famine. Okay, listen to this. Remember when uh, Elisha came to the Shunammite woman that blessed him with a little room and the bread and the bread and the table and the lamp? He said to her, the Lord told me that's coming a famine in the land. So prepare, get out of the land. Remember? So God can tell us if something's coming. So God says, behold, the days come where there will be a famine in the land. Now, I've got to take note because maybe God is saying, oh, because maybe it's fulfilled stuff, maybe. Okay, let's just listen to this. He says, Behold the day come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Where's my pen? Okay. God says there's going to come a famine in the land. It'll be a famine. Mm -hmm. Not of bread. neither of water but of hearing the word of the Lord 
Okay, this is God speaking. The days come, says God, that there will be a famine. Not of bread, not of water, but of hearing the word or hearing the voice of God. Remember, Jesus is full of the Holy Spirit. Coming out of the water of baptism, the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove. And the Bible says, full of the Holy Spirit, he entered into the wilderness or was led into the wilderness, depending which translation you have, to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. Remember, and here comes Satan, the old serpent, which is called devil. Here he comes and he says, if you are the son of God. Now, remember, Jesus is in the wilderness 40 days. Now, I want to ask you, if you're in the wilderness 40 days, what would be the first thing you want? For sure. Okay, the devil comes and he says, if you are the son of God, turn the stones into bread. Now, this is the context for those who heard me preach it. I'll just mention it short, briefly, just to, to get to a point. Uh, Jesus says in John 6, 63, and Paul quotes it more or less the same in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, the letter written on stone kills. The letter written on stone, or written in stone, kills. It's equal to kill, <laughs> or death, or whatever you want to call it. The, the, the letter that is written in stone kill. So Jesus and Paul refers there to the law. So the law can only kill you. I don't know why you should want to go back to the law. I don't know why one after the other person want to teach against, us again today, if you don't keep the law of God, if you don't keep, hey, we couldn't, that's why Jesus came. Yeah? So we still can't keep it. That's why we thank God that Jesus came. We will not be able to keep it tomorrow. That's why we keep on thanking God that Jesus came. Because if you trespass in one law, you've transgressed in all the laws. So don't try and abide to the law. Try and abide in the love of God. Because the love is the perfect one, not the law. The law is imperfect. That's why Jesus Christ came. So, you know, the law or the letter that's written in stone kills. But Jesus says, but the Spirit maketh alive. And then Jesus adds something. He says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The letter kills, the letter that's written in stone. In other words, the law kill you. But the spirit, ha ha, gives life. Then Jesus adds something. He says, the words, the words that I speak, this is Jesus the words that I speak, the, spirit, the words that I speak, okay? The stone, the letter on stone kills. The spirit gives life. The words that I speak, okay? There's going to be a famine, not of bread. Neither is there going to be a famine of water. But there's going to be a famine of hearing the word or some other translation would say the voice of the Lord. So here comes Satan after Jesus is filled with the Spirit. He says, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Now we know it's the desert, and the whole place is rocky. And and, and I didn't, if I've been fasting 40 days and I'm in the desert, I don't want bread, I want water. Hmm? Yet Satan comes and says, if you are the Son of God, turn the stones into bread. Jesus says, okay, let me go back to The letter that is written in stone, kill, which is the law. Jesus says, the Spirit gives life. The words that I speak, they are Spirit and they are life. The words that I speak, they are Spirit and they are life. But Satan didn't ask him if you are the Son of God. Let water come down from heaven. He didn't even ask him if he's hungry or thirsty. The Bible says Jesus hungered. But Satan didn't ask him if you're hungry. He said if you're son of God. So Jesus says, because I'm the son of God, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So there's going to come a time 
when there's going to be a famine in the land. The famine will not be for bread. The famine will not be for water. But the famine will be for hearing the word of God. So Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Maybe I should write it there on our board. It's spirit and it's life. This spirit gives life. In Ephesians 5 verse 26, the Bible says, Jesus gave himself for the church to sanctify it with the washing of water by the word. Again, sorry, can we just go to the previous page? There's going to come a time where there's going to come a famine in the land. The famine is not, why did I spell bread there? My goodness. That's a, hey, all right. Famine not for bread, famine not for water, but hearing the word or the voice of God. Satan says, if you are the son, make the stones bread. Hmm? In other words, make the law become something that will be of life-sustaining power. Jesus says, whoa, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. In other words, Jesus says, Satan, if I take the law and turn it into something that will sustain your life, it will still not do it because nobody will be ever be able to give the law. So the law will never be able to satisfy you, never in any way, in any area of your life. But man shall live by every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. Okay, so here it comes. So if the words that he speaks is spirit, and if he says he washed the church and cleansed it by the washing of the water of the word, then it means the word is spirit, is water. Huh? If the if the word is spirit and life, if he washed us with a washing of water by the word, if man shall not live by bread but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, then it means man shall live by the spirit of God which water him daily. So the spirit of God waters me by the word and that is my life sustaining force. Let's go to Psalm 29. Verse 3, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord, then it goes on. Verse 7, the voice of the Lord. Verse 8, the voice of the Lord. Verse 9, the voice of the Lord. Okay, so here's a good chapter for you about the voice of the Lord is upon many waters. Remember Revelation 1 verse 9 through 15? John says, I, John, who, whom also am your brother, in tribulation and in the kingdom, was on the isle called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then he starts talking about, he heard a voice. Hmm? Remember, and he turned around and he saw the Son of Man walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Remember, he had this golden girdle and his feet burning bronze and fire, hair white as wool and stuff like that. And then he comes to verse 15 when he saw his feet like bur bronze burning in the fire. He said, and, a vo and he had a voice like many waters. So the voice of the Lord is upon many waters. John said, when I heard the voice and I turned around to see which voice it was that was speaking to me, first he saw him. He said, and then I heard his voice. You know what it sounded like? Like many waters. Why? Because the voice of the Lord is upon many waters. Of course, does that mean if God speaks, it's going to sound like a waterfall? Okay, when last did you hear the waterfall? So Jesus says, the words that I speak are spirit. 
But the Spirit is compared to water over and over and over in the Bible. He gave Himself for the church so that He could sanctify it with the washing of the water by the Word. So the Word is a washing, it is the water. But the Word is Spirit. But the Word is the voice. But the Word is God speaking. So I heard Him and it sounded like many waters. Okay, does that mean when God speaks, we're going, whoa, where's the waterfall? No, no, no. It means there is a force behind the word that works like water in my life that brings a sanctification, a purification. When you are dirty, 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 hmm? you can take all the soap you want. You can take all the detergents you want. You can use all the handy and you can use all the liquid soap at the end. You need water to wash yourself. After you've put the soap on, you just became a soapy, dirty one. Huh? You need water to wash yourself off. If you crawl through the desert, you can look at any ad you want. If they put all those bottles of cold rings there, and you've been crawling for seven days through the desert, I promise you before Almighty God, you will not go for the one that says, mm -mm -mm, or the one that says, mm -mm -mm, or the one. You go for the one that says, still water. You'll grab it. Okay? So if you're dirty, you need water. If you're thirsty, you need <laughs> So God's word, his voice is upon the waters. His voice is like many waters. I mean, I mean, just think, here, here starts our Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and without form. Ah, and the spirit of the Lord. What did the spirit do? It hovered upon the face of the water. And what did the spirit that hovered upon the face of the water did? God said. Okay, so there's the water with the spirit upon it with a voice speaking to it. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. So we're going to find out if there's then a famine that's coming to the land, not bread, not water. If you are the son, turn the stone to bread. <laughs> it's not about bread. Hmm? Though I'm hungry. Hmm? It's not even about the thirsty water. Hmm? But it's about every word that proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. For this word is spirit. When last did you say, if I can just get a word from God? And you say, if I can just get a word from the Lord on this thing. If I can just hear what God is saying about this thing. If I can just understand the leading of the spirit in this thing. Oh God, if you just talk to me about that. Oh God, give me a dream. Oh God, give me a vision. Oh God, give me a scripture. So the scripture is fulfilled. There will be a famine of hearing the word of the Lord that's coming like water to wash your soul, to bring a purification so that you can hear for a change and every step you take will be ordered of the Lord and there will be nothing dirty about it. There will be nothing thirsty about it. There will be a total satisfaction. My goodness, God is doing something great okay so let's go to Hebrews chapter 3 listen to verse 7 wherefore as the Holy Ghost saith today if you will hear his voice harden not your heart as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness now I just want to help a few people that scripture is repeated I think three times in the Psalms. It's repeated, I think, twice in Deuteronomy. It's repeated in the book of Nehemiah. So this must be a very important scripture. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation as of the day when they hardened their hearts in the wilderness type of thing. So there must be something true in this scripture that will speak to us. Okay? He says, when your father tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 days. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Verse 15, whilst it is said, today if you will hear his voice, another time, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Chapter 4, 
Now let's look at verse 1. <laughs> let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he speak in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God had rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. I, I wonder if anybody sees a word that stands out above all the other words. Can you mention it? Oh man, if I can just get out of this meeting, I really want to go rest. That's not the rest he's talking about. He's talking about something like Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, where he says, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you shall find rest for your Thank you. Say it out loud. Rest for your soul. Why rest for your soul? Because that's where you get anxious. That's where you fear. That's where you get troubled. That's where you get stressed up. That's where sickness started. That's where your trouble starts, you know. Not yours, I mean the guy that you're going to speak to in the street tomorrow. But you know, people are troubled in their souls. And they need rest for their soul. So where can you find rest? He says, today if you hear my voice. He says, so there's going to come a famine. It's not going to be for bread. It's not going to be for water. But people will have a famine of, oh God, I got to hear your voice. God, I got to know your word. God, I got to understand what the scriptures say. Let me understand what is the word say. I'm going to get a famine after my word, after my voice. So that's what the scripture says. So that word will come. Come to me. What will happen if I come to me? His voice will speak. What does his voice do? It's washing of water. What is what? Spirit. Which is what? Life. What will do what? Rest. Okay. So today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. As he saith, you know, you know what will he do? If you don't hear it, you will not enter the rest. So what will happen if I hear the voice? Peace. Why peace? Because I will not struggle to know what I must do tomorrow. I will not struggle to find out, must I buy this or mustn't I buy this? How would you like to have that rest? You just know, I must do this, got to do that. I mean, the book of Isaiah said, you'll hear a voice behind that will say, this is the way, walk either in, when you want to turn to the left or you want to turn to the right. How would you love never to ask, what? How? When? I think this is more or less the prophecy that we got in January 2010. In this year, it'll come to a place where we will not ask where or when. But every promise will zap, bam, bam, all of a sudden start coming. And what will happen to us? Isn't that why he says, you know, we all know this scripture. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I, I thought that word is still big in Christian vocabulary. What does it mean to not want? It means everything is in surplus. That means I'm satisfied. That means my thirst is quenched. That means I know the will of God. I know the way of God. I've got the thoughts of Christ. I know the leading of the Spirit. I don't struggle to find it because there's going to come a famine. Oh God, I've got to understand. I've got to hear. I've got to know. And when that comes, ah, I shall not want. What does He do? He makes me. Help me. Lie down. Where? In green pastures. Hmm? Hmm? Then? 
What does he do? Thank you. Okay. So if my soul is at rest, it means, ah. Revelation 7 would be good. Verse 16. They shall hunger no more. Neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which in the, is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Okay, just stop one minute. The lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Now think back. If you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Hmm? Hmm? If you're long in the wilderness, you don't want bread, you want water. But he says, I'm going to send a famine in the land, not of bread, neither of water, but after my word. The word is spirit, but the word is water. So if the Lord is my shepherd and he's going to restore my soul and he's going to bring rest to me if I come to him and he's my shepherd and he's going to lead me, make me lie down in green pastures, then lead me to still waters and when I get to the still waters, bam, 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 my soul is restored. In other words, I've got peace for my soul. That is actually revival. In other words, wow. So if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Now here the word comes and he says, for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne. Now he starts over verse 7, they shall hunger no more and thirst no more. Yeah. No more hunger, no more thirst. In other words, not bread and water. But it's concerning the lamb in the throne. Yeah. Okay. And I saw in the midst of the throne and out of the lamb comes a river of the water of life. And what does this river of water of life do? Okay, you can read 21 and 22 of Revelation. No more tears. No more death. No more sickness because the leaves are there. Verse 17. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall, help me, lead them into what? Living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Come on, let's think a bit deeper of just our normal theology. In other words, all my tears are wiped away. In other words, I'm not crying to be healed. I'm not crying to find the will of God. I'm not crying to get my debts paid. I'm not crying to get my needs met. Man, I'm at the fountain of living water. I a place where my soul has got peace. I've entered into rest. Why? Because I've heeded the famine of the word of the Lord. And I said, God, if there's something I've got to know in 2000, 2010, it's the voice, it's the word of God 24 hours a day. I've got to be led by the Spirit, which is the word of God coming to me like water. Okay, so let's get back to that scriptures that we read in Hebrews where over and over he says, if you hear my voice today, don't harden your heart like they did in the wilderness. So where is he quoting from? Let's go to Exodus 17. All the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim and there was no water for the people to drink. Then the people contended with Moses and they said, give us water, give us water. Remember, you know these people. Verse 3, and the people thirsted there for water. And they murmured against Moses and said, wherefore did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us? Hmm? He didn't bring them to kill them. He bring them to take them to the promised land. Yeah. Yeah? So what do they see? We're going to die. We're going to die. Why? Because they're in the wilderness. Why? Because there's no water. Verse 5. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river. Take it in thy hand also. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock. Okay, now the rest is, and you shall smite the rock. 
And there shall come water out of it. Out of what? Out of the rock. That the people may drink. Hmm? Just turn the same story. Was it Numbers 20 I think? And the Israelites, the whole congregation came into the wilderness of sin. Okay, just stop one minute. This is 40 years later. Same place. Same story. Okay. They just entered the wilderness. The first thing they faced is, oh my goodness. No water. God says, Moses, hey, you see that rock? Go to the rock and then I will go ahead of you. And I will stand on the rock. And you can read some try. And the minute you see me on the rock, hit the rock. And when you hit the rock, smite the rock. The word smite in King James is a good word. Water will come out. Mm -hmm. So, Numbers 20. 40 years later, I mean, you should think these, these guys should have learned. But, you know, coming around the mountain. Um, Coming round the mountain, we, 40 years. Coming round the mountain, we coming round the mountain. Coming round the mountain, 40 years later, we have no water. But in the meantime, they had manna, they had quails, they had bitter water made sweet, they had water out of the rock. 40 years later, we have no water. Same place, same situation, 40 years later, same desert. That's true. Israelites, we've got to find out why I say this. Wilderness of sin in the first month, and the people dwelt in Kadesh. Miriam died and she was buried there. Now, there was no water for the congregation. They assembled together against Moses and Aaron. And the people, don't forget what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say this water of the word, which is spirit, which is water, which is word, which is a spirit word, which is a water, will come and it will bring rest to you if you enter. If you hear that voice, rest will come to your soul, which is he will lead you beside still water where you will find restoration for your soul. It means your needs will be met. Verse 1, I shall not want. In other words, no anxiety, no fear, no stress. Why? Because the famine has been answered to, my thirst has been quenched, and I hear his voice. I hear his voice. I hear his voice. I heard a voice. Ah, oh, and I turned around. Ah, oh, it was like many waters. Woo! It wasn't like the Niagara or something falls, I mean, like noisy. It was like many waters. Wow. Oh. <sighs> every portion of my soul that needs to be washed by this water that needs to bring restoration and rest it just touches me in every per portion <sighs> verse 3 and the people contended with Moses same story verse 4 why have you brought us to die in the wilderness same story why have you made us I mean you should think they should be quieted after 40 years but God says Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts like they did when they were in the wilderness. So God says, the voice is still coming today. What does this voice want to do? He says, there's a famine. What is this famine? Hmm? It's not bread and water, but it's for water. But it's for bread. But for what water? The word. Verse 7, and the Lord said to Moses, take the rod Assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother, and t tell the rock, King James, speak to the rock, before their eyes to give forth its water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, and you shall give the congregation there. I'm not going to do the rest of the story, you know, the wickedness thereof, but we just do the first portion for our study. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Did all eat the same spiritual meat? Did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. Moses, I will be ahead of you on the rock. When you see me on the rock, 
smite the rock and water will come out. This Bible, the one that you got there in front of your eyes, didn't say the water came out of the rock. It says the water came out of the rock that followed, which is Christ. So the water didn't come out of the stony rock. That was just a manifestation. The water physically, literally ran out of our Lord Jesus Christ. Water, 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 water. What did he had to do? He had to smite the rock. Isaiah 53 says he was smitten of God. He was afflicted, yet we did esteem him, you know, stricken and, uh, you know, you know, and we turned our faces as we hid it from him. Yet he took our infirmities and he bore our diseases. And yet he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. What happened? When the rock was smitten, out, gushed out, healing, deliverance, salvation, the peace. Or oh, anything that could e touch you in every area of your life came out of the rock. And he says the second time, now Moses, you've completed the journey. The rock has been smitten. Now let's talk to the rock. Let's speak. Hmm? So if we can have now fellowship with our rock of our salvation and realize that he's been smitten already and don't harden our hearts like in the provocation in the wilderness but we open our hearts Moses you know he fell into the same thing as them he said must I show you something I'm going to hit him again so the Bible says if we don't accept this stuff we crucify the son of God a second time do you want to crucify him again if you want to say, oh Lord, forgive me for so being so rebellious. I'm just going to, I want to hear your voice. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to speak to you and know that you speak back to me. If I say, Father, you say, yes, son. And I want to hear you when I speak. If I open the Bible, I want to hear God speak to me. If I sit in a sermon like this, I want to hear the voice of God. If I want to get up at night, I want to hear his voice. If I want to get up in the morning, I want to hear his voice. What is his voice? do it's like waters maybe we should do Psalm 36 verse 5 thy mercy O Lord is in the heavens thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds thy righteousness is like the great mountains thy judgment are a great deep O Lord thou preservest man and beast how excellent is thy loving kindness O God Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And you shall make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with you is the fountain of life. Amen. Okay, loving kindness, I think, if I must sum up loving kindness, I will say grace and mercy. Amen. Together forms loving kindness. What is grace? Free. What is mercy? Free. So what is loving kindness? Free, free. <laughs> God, your loving kindness. So what does it say? Okay, what is he going to do? He's going to make us drink. At what? At the river of what? His pleasures. Say, so how would it be to find the pleasure of the Lord? Let's go to the mountain of the Lord. Okay. okay. To what did we do there? We're going to find the pleasures of the Lord. Where is it going to be? Oh, down the mountain, the river flow. Bring refreshing wherever it goes. So what does this river do? It refreshes, it restores, it renews, it revives, it satisfies. It brings me pleasure. Hmm? If I look at most of the people in this house a little pleasure will not harm you Amen. Hmm? would you elbow the guy next to you said it's you why don't you take me out for a change okay I think a little pleasure will not harm the most of you hmm? you know what pleasure does it takes that frown off and puts a smile in yeah. its place how would you like to? Hmm. Why is he always smiling? Hmm. 
<laughs> He's happy. Why? Because of the pleasures. Why? At the rivers. Yeah. Where? Of the loving kindness. What happened? The abundance of the fatness of his house. Okay. So what, where do we find the fatness or the anointing? Well, Psalm 65 describes it as the river. He says that fatness of the river is like the footprints of the Lord that is dripping fatness. He says the river of God is full. You'll never find it empty. In other words, when you come under the gushing of that river, you will never find it being empty. That's why it sounded like the voice of many waters. It's never empty. Isaiah 55. Everyone that thirsty, that thirsteth. Come to the waters and he that hath no money. Come buy, come eat. How would you like that on the house? Come buy and eat. Wow, imagine that. Come buy wine, come buy milk without money, without price. How would you like that? They open the mall and say, hey, whatever you want, you can come and buy. Oh, I've got no money. It's just as good. We've got no price. He said, with no price and no money. In other words, we've got no price, so we don't care if you've got no money. How would you like to come buy and eat? Without price and without money. So, you walk into the Lamborghini shop. You say, 2.4 million. You come there tomorrow, they say, you say, what's the price? They say, no, there's no price for this. So how would somebody buy it? Oh, you don't need money. Ah. Okay, that's all right. Okay, just take it lower. That's City Golf. Okay. <laughs> in, in short, you will find rest for your soul. In short, you shall have no want. In short, I will lead you beside still waters. What will he do? Restore my soul. I mean, how would you love it above anything else to fill that famine that's right now raging all across the world? Oh God, what must I do? Where must I go? Okay. Let's re read on. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which satisfy not. Hearken diligently. Here it comes. Unto me. Eat that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. You will make them drink at the river of thy pleasure. Oh man, the river of God is full. The footsteps and the wagon wheels of God, forgive me, drips with fatness. Psalm 63 and Psalm 65. God is about to satisfy the thirsting in your soul, the famine that is there. What must I do? Where must I go? When must I do? How will I pay? How can I get out? What must I say? I mean, God says, hear my voice. Yeah. Here comes verse 3. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear. And your soul shall live. Let's read on. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returneth not to the, but water the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. What I'm trying to say is, how would you like God's blessings? Which he also blessed Abram with. To become your blessings. How would you like to receive everything that he said in this book? My goodness, you shall not dash your foot against a stone. Nothing shall hurt you. Nothing shall harm you. No evil shall come upon you. Blessed, you know, bless. what? We can look as honest as we want to. 
But if we take the word want and put a few dots in there, who will stand in line and say, oh, I'm there. Well, good I'm there. Bless God. No wants, brother. No wants. My list is full. Hmm? The banks ask me not to bring money anymore, you know. <laughs> I don't never hear of flu, virus, headaches. I know, you know, but you know, some people still do. Hmm? I've got the best car that they ever made. There's only two made, you know, and one is in the factory to show you how it was made. The other one belongs to me. Huh? <laughs> I'm just trying to say, are we there yet? Or is there still some stuff that we can say? My goodness, God. If if what I say is not relevant, why do you pray? Good scriptures that you can just think. There's 13 scriptures. If I just think vividly, I did count them once. I think 13 scriptures in Isaiah directly talking about a prophetic fulfillment of Jesus saying, I will bring you water. Mm -hmm. Remember Isaiah 44 verse 3, he says, I will pour water. On him that is thirsty. Now if I'm thirsty, I don't want poured water, I want drinking water. I will pour floods upon the dry ground. Okay? Isaiah 43 verse 18 says, Do not behold the former things, but behold, I will do a new thing. Even now will it spring forth. Will you not notice it? I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Okay, so what's the new thing? God's going to bring rivers, waters. What is it? It's the word. It's the spirit. What will he do? Restore, revive. What will he do? It'll take me to rest. What is rest? Hey, God just what I wanted. I've got just what I wanted. I've got just what I wanted from the Lord. The wilderness and the solitary or dry place shall be glad. <clears throat> the desert shall rejoice. Blossom as a rose. Okay, now, is he talking about the desert somewhere in the Sinai Strip or the Gaza Desert? Hmm? The Palestinian Strip? Hmm? Some bomb blasting somewhere. Ooh, see where these bombs are? One of these days, there's going to be flowers. <laughs> if you want flowers, you better plant them in your windowsill and water them every morning. No covers. Whoa, you. Yeah. Hey, God is more concerned about you than God is concerned about a strip in the Middle East. Oh, yeah. oh God. Oh, God. If I behold, mm, never mind the Middle East, the sun and the moon, and the star, oh, 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 Hubble, Hubble, send us another photo. If I behold all the galaxies and the whole universe, what is man? That thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him, you crown him. Hmm? It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice. Even with joy and singing, the glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Hey, if we can preach now. I mean, Isaiah 11 verse 9 says, the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2.14 says more or less the same. He just adds the word knowledge. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Numbers 14.21. As truly as I live, my glory shall cover the earth. How will the glory cover the earth? Brother, it's going to come like a smoke from the Sinai Strip. No, 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 no. The treasure of the glory is inside earthen vessels. It's going to come forth out of us because we are the vessels that's been prepared for glory. We are the people that will show forth His glory. Hmm? Not some mountain or some tree. We did not come to a mountain that can be touched. But we have come to Mount 
Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the innumerable company of angels. We have come to the spirits of the saints made perfect, and we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a better testament, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks of better things than that of Abel. And that's where we have come. Verse 3, and this is quoted there in Hebrews 12 as well. Strengthen the weak hands. Confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God comes with vengeance. The God comes with recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. The lame shall leap as the heart or a deer. The tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. You can take all the cripples, you can take all the blind, and you can take all the deaf, and you can put them in the desert, let the rain come. Let every river flood its banks, the claim's not going to walk, the blind's not going to see, the deaf's not going to hear. So he's talking about you. Hey. There's a famine of hearing the voice of God. Saying, hey, I want you well. I want you prosperous. I want you successful. I want your business to break out. I want your ministry to be anointed. I want stuff to happen in your life. I want you to have peace in your soul. I want you to have health for your body. If Adam and Eve never ate of the tree, would they have died? No. So Jesus came to redeem us so that we could die? Are we going to have a worse life than Adam? Or at least a better life than Adam? Have you ever read Genesis 3.24? He says, let's put an angel with a flaming, glistering sword at the east of the garden to protect the way of the tree of life, that perhaps if they should break through and touch it, they may live and never die. Hmm? Hmm? The parched ground shall become a pool, the thirsty land springs of water, habitation of dragons. Oh my goodness. That means the Chinese people are included too. Okay. <laughs> Verse 8 in there shall be... No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go thereupon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. No lion. Didn't Jesus say you shall tread upon the lions? Psalm 91 says the same thing. So where is it? He says, when we find this waters of the word, which is the voice, which is the spirit, which is Christ, which is the fountain of living water, where he leads us, where our souls are restored and we find rest, what will happen? No lion's going to get us anymore. What was the way out of the wilderness? The river. What did they have to do to get to the, out of the wilderness? They had to go through the river. To where? To their promises. We're going to manifest it. We're going to stir the water, anoint it. And then we're going to go through the pool. Okay? So, uh, are you ready for it? So before we do that, you can go through that pool, come out wet on the other side, free of cancer, sickness, and disease. And still be full of sin. Hmm? No. Jesus says, Son, your sins are forgiven. I don't know if I should push this point. And they said, This is blasphemous. How can you say your sin? He said, What's easier to say, Rise up, take your bed and behold, or to say your sins are forgiven? But to show that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins, Rise up, take up your bed and go home. 
So if we minister to the sick, at the same time, it's a proof that your sin is forgiven. Because sickness is the result of original sin. But if God has forgiven our sin, then our sickness must go too. But to help people, we pray a prayer. And we ask Jesus to come into our life. So if you want to say, Jesus, come into my life, would you just stand? I'm going to pray with you. Everybody, no, no, no. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. In your house, you can pray this prayer with us. All those people standing, just say out loud, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as Lord. Right now, I make you my Lord. Forgive my sin. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me inside, outside. Make me your own. I receive you right now as my Savior. And right now, I'm getting saved and born again by the Spirit and the Word of God. In Jesus' name, I receive a new life. Okay, all those people standing, don't let anybody put you in condemnation. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Bible says you are saved. So I declare your sins are forgiven. You are free. There is no condemnation. You are free. Your sins are forgiven. There is no condemnation.